Welcome to second semester of phonetics. We're going to start right away uh, by looking at the class webpage. If you go to the home page of the website, go to phonetics, you'll see introduction to phonetics one, here's two, click on two, that brings you to the index for a second semester. And so far we've got 28 items. Item number one, where it says course description, also includes the syllabus for the class. We're going to be building it up as we go along. We've only got the first week up now. So you need to follow that week to week to find out or to confirm the assignments given in class. Uh, eligibility for the class, you need one semester of introduction to phonetics to qualify to be in this class because it is advanced, challenging work. Uh, without that background, I think it would be really, really difficult, though others are welcome to, um, to audit if you like. And going over the introduction, we've already said students who have successfully completed one semester of an introductory phonetics course, others by permission only if you have some special circumstances. The course is highly recommended for anyone planning to do advanced work in phonetics or linguistics. It's a serious but friendly course. So we do really solid work here, but we have a lot of fun doing it. And like last semester, this course will also be video recorded and made available to the public on Taiwan University's OCW, Open Courseware site. The textbooks we'll be using are these two. First of all, Peter Latifoget and Keith Johnson, A Course in Phonetics, 6th edition. This is what we used last semester. Everybody should have it already. If you took phonetics last semester with me or the previous year with Professor Feng Yijian. We're going to have a second, a second textbook for the course by the same main author, Peter Latifoget. It's vowels and consonants. We like the third edition. I've only brought the second edition today. The third edition should be available from Cranes. Make sure you have it by Wednesday. Wednesday is going to be our vowels and consonants day. Instead of going over this textbook in class, you're going to be responsible for reading one chapter a week yourself and then writing a summary on the content of the chapter, focusing on the parts that are new to you. If there's parts that are really, really familiar, you just don't need to spend a lot of time going over them, you can skip those or just write a sentence or two. Concentrate on the new areas, the areas that are new to you, and also areas that you have questions about. If something is not clear, make sure you put that at the end of your summary and then bring it up in class. Every Wednesday, the first thing, almost the first thing I'm going to ask you is any questions on this week's chapter in vowels and consonants. Have your question ready, write it out at the end of your summary and then ask it right away so we don't spend time just flipping through a book. Okay? And in addition to writing a weekly summary, of a chapter of this book, you also need to write two questions for each chapter. And you write them as though you were a teacher trying to test a student on the material in that chapter. Or in addition, you can also, like I said, ask questions about things you don't understand. Or there's a third possibility, questions about things that you've thought of during the week that you're wondering about related to the course, especially to this book, but general questions as well something related to what we're doing. Write them out in the summary. You can bring them up in class and I really encourage that because usually it benefits everybody. They often will have a similar question or they'll be interested or curious about what you've been wondering about. And we'll either answer it in class or the TAs and I will answer it on paper. But I prefer to answer them in class so more people can learn about it. So weekly summary, one chapter a week. They will not be given in order we're not going to go according to the order in the book. The reason for that is we're not going to do heavy duty acoustics until chapter eight. We're starting with chapter six in A Course in Phonetics and acoustics doesn't come till chapter eight. But this book starts very early on acoustics and we've already understood, I think we've learned quite a bit about acoustics last semester. I don't think it was thoroughly digested and I didn't really intend it to be because it was too much, too early. 
but we will be going into acoustics in depth this semester in chapter 8. So I've moved the chapters, at least some of them, on acoustics till later. Some of them may still come before we get to chapter 8. And I will just say, I'll explain it as best I can, but we'll have to wait till chapter 8 before we make the whole story clear. Okay? So just have that kind of in mind that if you start getting into things that are too heavily um, about acoustics, you can ask questions and I'll do my best to explain, but you may need to wait till chapter 8 to get the full explanation. So don't be intimidated by it. Just say, we'll let it go for now. We can come back to it later. But other than acoustics, anything else we should clear up as we go along. The other things, there should be no problem. This book is actually intended for people who are not majors in linguistics. So although it's quite heavy on acoustics, it's quite light on things like IPA symbols. So they don't even introduce IPA until quite late in the book. And that's something where you are much stronger. You already know IPA, at least for English. And so um, you will kind of, you will feel that parts of it are really uh, too easy for you, while other parts are quite challenging. However, overall, students' reaction to the book has been very good. They said it was really fun. A lot of them said that's the first book, the first entire book they finished in the YYC. The first entire book they finished, and they felt so proud. And they said, my gosh, it took me a whole semester to read one book. What about all those other books that I want to read from cover to cover? But never mind. You will get through the whole book. You'll feel really good. You will learn a lot. Another really nice thing about it is it reinforces things you've already learned in this book. And some of it may be kind of hazy or fading away. This book will help reinforce it and make it more solid. So in many ways, this is a really, really good companion volume for the course. OK, so one summary a week with two questions. Have your questions ready on Wednesday morning. In addition, we will still ask you to hand in a summary of your class notes every Monday morning. That's the first thing we'll do on Monday morning. Uh, organize your class notes. Make sure that you PDF them so your symbols don't come, come out as mojibake. Everybody remembers what mojibake is. Okay, it's a winsu sala. Um, that will happen unless you PDF your file. Make sure all the symbols come out correctly. We'll collect that on Monday. Uh, so that is standing work that we have every week. You have two written assignments a week. There will be additional work, but these are standing assignments that you need to do every week. Um, those are the two textbooks. Both of them are available at Wenghe at Cranes. You should all know where that is. And here's our description. The course is a continuation of in Introduction to Phonetics 1. And if you've taken a different phonetics course, you're also welcome in the course. The primary goal will be to finish Latifoga's A Course in Phonetics, starting from Chapter 6, which is airstream mechanisms and phonation types. Everybody remember these stress patterns? We went over them lots of times last semester. So make sure you do not say mechanism, OK? Nobody say mechanism, or I'm going to scream. All right, so no mechanism. It's mechanism, mechanism, mechanism. And it's not stressed here because it's a noun compound, a compound noun. Airstream mechanisms, airstream mechanisms. Remember that now, OK? And phonation types is also a compound noun. So don't stress types, don't stress mechanisms, and when you do stress mechanisms, make sure the stress is on the first syllable, mechanisms. And we're also going to go through the material in latifogids and Disner's vowels and consonants. In addition to the usual submission of class notes on Monday, every Wednesday you'll read and submit a brief summary of one chapter of vowels and consonants along with two questions from the chapter a week in this sequence. Okay, this is the new part. And at the beginning, we're going to go in order, but after that, it's going to jump around a lot because it's going to jump around to things that we're already more familiar with. We've gone over a lot of things about vowels and consonants last semester, so we're going to jump towards the end of the book. The first three weeks, chapters 1, 2, and 3 in order. And you can see 11, 12, 13, 14, there's a chunk in order towards the end, and then in April, we're going to come back to chapter 4 because that talks about acoustics. 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, and then we're going to finish the book, 15 and 16. Okay, this is all clear so far? Practical exercises in English pronunciation will be assigned as time permits with emphasis on consolidating past progress and identifying and fine-tuning areas 
left for improvement. A number of web assignments will be given and students will get more practice in using Plot and other speech tools. We're going to do a lot more with Plot this semester. Students are expected to take careful class notes, including on pronunciation corrections. Even if it's somebody else's corrections, write them all down. Write all of them down. And then organize them because usually if someone makes a mistake, most of the rest of the class probably has a similar problem. When students say, I want a clear formula about how you give grades, and this is a big problem in Thai England, they complain a lot. And I'm sorry, I don't have a formula for measuring attitude. Can any of you measure that with a number? I can see your attitude. We all are sensitive to attitude. Even animals can see attitude, as I mentioned before. So if I see your attitude is very GG, you're really into what you're doing, you're working hard, you're going the extra mile, that of course will get you extra points, and how much progress you make. So if you already start out knowing everything and then you don't make much effort, you don't get extra points for that. But if you started out kind of in the middle, but then you really surged ahead, that will, of course, get you extra points. So that's about all I have to say about how we're going to calculate the grades. My biggest concern is being fair. I try very, very hard to be fair. And I do it, I give you credit for anything at all I can, and I push it towards the positive rather than trying to find how many points I can take off. So that is as best as I can explain how the grades will be calculated. As I said, the syllabus will only be posted, in most cases, one week at a time. So we have only the first week here. So today we've taken care of, and while we haven't quite finished taking care of the class list, we may have to still finalize some details. And we talked about the textbooks. And two, what we're going to do next is we're going to share three observations that you've made over the winter break about language. Okay, I told you at the end of the semester, anybody who comes back, that we would do this the first class and we will do that today. And after that's done, we will start reading chapter six of Latifoga Johnson's A Course in Phonetics. And that's the plan for today. Any questions at all? Anybody? We're all okay with it? So everybody, if you wrote it down, if you made some notes about your language observations over break, and I reminded you over Facebook, I hope everybody remembered, we'll just go in order. Still say your names, although with a smaller class, it's a lot easier to remember names. Um, still give your name, and then share your observations. I may give you feedback. I'll go, oh yeah, that's right, and then I'll get excited or something like that. And the rest of you can also give feedback. You can participate, raise your hand and say, yes, I've had a similar experience, or actually, I think it'd be better explained in this way. Maybe someone you think didn't interpret the data the way you think makes more sense. Okay, so everybody clear? Um, and everybody take notes. You may find some really interesting stuff. I generally take a lot of notes when students are talking about their observations. Okay, Wendy? Wendy, um, the, first, the first observation I had, it, most, of, most of it from my mother. And the first one is uh, Chinese. F and H, she cannot distinguish between Fa and Hua. Okay. And the second is from my uncle. Um, she, he said free as flee. Say it again. F free. Okay. And he, he said flee. 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 With F? With with L, with L, the R, the R in turned into a L. Yes. For three or free? Free. For ziyao. Yes. So he says for Li. Yes. Okay. And the third one is the O and R, like Mao Ding. And my mother said Mao Ding, and I cannot understand what she was talking about. Okay, I didn't catch it all completely either. Can you? It's Mao Ding. Mm -hmm. And she said Mao Ding. Oh, okay. It sounds like Mao Ding. Yeah. That's a really good one. That's an important one because that seems to be another change going on in Taiwan Mandarin. I hear it less often with M, but it's really common with F. How do you say Buddhism? <laughs> 
Jerome's the only one who says it the traditional way. I want to hear everybody say the word for Buddhism. We're going to go around the room, just quickly. You don't have to focus on each one. I just want to hear how every, everybody in the class says the word Buddhism. Louder? Yours is halfway, again? Okay. <laughs> Again. Ha, ah, you're the only one. Uh, because I learned it in elementary school that uh, when Bapama was followed by all, we should add a U right. between them. So it was conscious learning. Yeah. And so you now consciously I, make I, it. Bo tai, yeah. or bo but I don't think anybody has trouble. Does anybody say bo tai? No. P or for example, po diao. Mirror po diao. Right? But with f it's different. And it's also just a yin. There's only fu diao the fu. There's no other as far as I know, there are, at least there are very few, if there are any, words pronounced fu. But now nearly a hundred percent of the people in Taiwan say fu jiao. But the original pronunciation was fu, listen, fu jiao, fu jiao, right? Fu jiao. Isn't that funny? Because it's not just you, but even Xi Lao Shi, he said it too and he caught himself. But that's how he says it when he's not thinking, fu jiao. It sounds very funny to my ears because I learned fu jiao. That's the ke ben yin. But in Taiwan, it's change to fo jiao, nearly 100%. So that may be connected to it or not, uh, Wendy. 可能有关系, 可能也没有关系. It might be just your mother's own quirk. But we have, that, we have that pattern with a different initial. So that one's very interesting. OK, do you have any more? That was three. That was enough. But did you collect any others? I think that was enough. OK, that's fine. So three. I that five, but I lost, I lost I, that's my note. Oh, <laughs> well, that's okay. You completed the assignment. Three was very good. Okay, Annie? Uh, I'm Annie, and uh, I went to a workshop in January, and there's a professor coming from British. and From, uh, from England. England. And, and British is an adjective. Everybody watch that. From Britain. You can say from Britain, but we don't usually say it. From the UK or from England? England is only part of the UK, but... From the UK, if you're not sure, maybe it was Scotland or Wales. Or if it's from England, you can just say England. From the UK, from England, OK? And he said issue instead of issue. OK. And the second one is? Probably um, issue, not issue, issue. Issue, mm -hmm. yeah. And um, another professor is, um, has a Chinese English, he said, what is going on instead of what is going on. OK, from Taiwan? Yes. OK. And then did you tell him, stop, it stops? No. <laughs> you didn't tell him? Why not? <laughs> OK. And the third one is from Taiwanese and from my um, cousin. And he told me that uh, when you are, um, <laughs> he said, um, when you want to uh, open a door, you can say "pa kui" or "pa kui kui" or "pa ho kui kui kui," <laughs> and it means a uh, different. Um, 就是打开的程度不一样的时候，会用kui kui kui 跟 kui 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 来分。<laughs> 可是，在中文里面，你不会说打开、打开、开跟打开、开开。That's a really good one. In Minayu, they have these triplets. For example, yeah, that's right. Hong, hen, hong, hen, hong. How do you say Minayu? Ang, ang, ang. Yeah. So you have triplets in Minayu. A lot of people study these because they're so fun. They're so interesting. But I hadn't heard that one with a verb like that. <laughs> but actually, it's an adjective. So open it until it's very open, sort of. It's, it's like an adjective. That's a really good one. That's very interesting. OK, that was three. Any more? All right, as for issue, this is a really 
hypercorrect pronunciation. I call it hypercorrect or extremely conservative pronunciation. In British English, it is normally issue. Yeah. Some people say issue, but my British teacher tells me, he says, oh, it's a terribly important issue. You know, he's, so that's not the usual pronunciation according to my British teacher. It's issue, the same as in American. Mm, okay, and there are other words that rhyme with it. For example, tissue, tissue. It also sounds funny to his ears, he tells me. Okay, good. Um, I'm Sylvie, and I, I don't know that we have this yes. assignment, but I do have um, some experience that in this winter vacation, I found out that I have a different accent um, with my grandparents. From? From my grandparents. 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 From my grandparents. Oh, so grandparents. Grandparents. Yep. And that my grand grandfather said, um, do as chopsticks. Mm hmm. Right. Chopsticks. Mm hmm. And I say, D. Uh huh. So that, uh, and I, I didn't realize that we actually speak an, uh, we actually speak a different accent for so many years because we live together every day. Because you just understand it and don't notice it. It's just such a normal variation that in the past you probably just find just down down the. But now I think your ears are sharper than they used to be. Where are your grandparents from originally? Uh, and do they have anything else in their pronunciation that's unusual? Uh, we, uh, the, didn't say that. Did we don't say that word very much. Okay. But we we have a pronunciation much more similar than that in Ilan. Oh, so yeah. it's a little bit like Ilan Chan. Yeah, but we moved in Taipei for several years, so they kind of change their accent, so I, I don't know the original accent, because okay. they already changed. How do they say Huang Se de Huang? Do you know? I say mm. Right. Do they say Ng mm too? The Yilan accent is Ng? Mm. No, I'm not that sure, but okay. we say Mui and some Mui, so that's for soap. Some Mui. Okay, so that's, I think that's still some Hanji of the Ilan Chia. Listen to them more when you go back and see if you can find more words and how much is left from their Ilan accent and how much they've changed to more standard Minayu. Yeah. That's really interesting. And do they say tu, you said for chopsticks, or du? They say du. Du, not du. No. Okay, because <clears throat> in my host family many years ago, they say du. It's not du, it's du. Both for juro de ju and kuai zi is du. So look at their lips when they say it to make sure. <clears throat> du with the glottal stop after it? Uh, the point is not the glottal stop, the point is lip rounding. Okay. Because we don't have the u sound either in English or in Mandarin, right? Guo yu ye mei yao, yin yu ye mei yao. Most people's minan yu ye mei yao. Most people in Taiwan, yeah. Nani? Jin men. Yeah, I think from the more northern part. Yeah, that's right. And I, my host mother had it in any case. I don't know if Jima is the only area. So can you confirm that, Sophie? We say do. You do, yeah. OK, so Jima is one place. It may not be the only one. This is a shitong. So the next time you visit your grandparents, listen carefully for words pronounced with, uh, well, words there's a group of words. They don't all have the same endings in Mandarin. So, zhu ro de zhu, and then the kuai zi, and then the kuai zi, and then Right, lai chu de chu. In man, in Iban de Minan, you say ki, right? But they say ku. And it's not ku, it's ku. So, look at their lips when they say those words. Kan ta de yuan chun de chen du duo shao. Because we will probably hear it as Wu because we don't have u. Woman zi ren shi wu. Kasi kanan zi ku. Gen du. Deng deng. Okay? It's a great observation. Do you have anything else? Uh, that my cousin is learning Chinese right now because she, uh, he is three years old. 
and we found out he has a Taiwanese accent of Chinese. Okay. So he said chi huan instead of chi fan. And we try to correct it, but it seems like it's not possible because he doesn't want to. Where do you think he got it? His From parents? From my grandparents. His grandparents? From my grandparents because he's, uh, uh, he's a son of my aunt. So he lived with a, a wife. wife. So he doesn't speak Taiwanese at home, but he, he visits us uh, one thing a week. But he learns chi huan instead of chi fan. Huh. But he doesn't have that much time around people who speak like that. Why do you think he picked it up? Does he identify with the people who speak that way? Does he re is he close to his grandparents, for example? Or, um, I don't know the situation at their home. Maybe they don't tell him to chi fan every day, but in in my place, we we will announce uh, this activity before chi fan. So maybe this is this is the only time he he hears that. Uh huh. But it's really uh, unusual that he catches this phrase from someone who he only meets once in a week. It is. That is really interesting. Follow up on that. See if you can see what happens with his accent. Because such a small child, you'd expect them just to pick up. Mandarin like everybody else. Because a three-year-old, a three-year-old will obviously copy what they hear. And he can do it. It's not that he's 不是说没有能力, There's something going on. That's really interesting. OK, anything else? Um, I have a little, little cousin. He's his brother who is less than about 11 months right now. And I spoke French to him. <laughs> And I don't think he understands, but he found out it's a new language that he never heard of. So he has a surprised face. Ah, isn't that interesting? I just read an article yesterday on the internet, and um, somebody remind me to post it if I forget, about very, very young children being able, infants being able to tell the difference between two languages especially children who grow up bilingual. And it says that they rely partly on duration of vowels. They can tell that this language has different lengths of the segments than their other language. So very, very young children, infants, can tell the difference between two languages. So I bet it was really fun seeing his reactions to this new language. Because he's staring, he was staring at me for about um, for minutes. And he just kept staring at you. Yeah, yeah because, and then listening to you pronounce it, and watching your mouth. And the action is like I've, I've changed into another person that he's never known of. How interesting. Isn't that interesting? <laughs> but this reaction doesn't show when I speak uh, Mandarin, Chinese, or Taiwanese, which he's already familiar with. But with English uh, and French, especially French, because we don't have that much French program on on TV, so the action is more exaggerated. That's really fun. That's, that's so interesting. I can remember my nephew long, long time ago. I wanted to teach him Chinese because I was already learning Chinese then. And he thought it was really funny too. And the first thing I, I, ta I taught him was kan yi kan. He went, over through the, went out through the house, kan yi kan, kan yi kan. <laughs> he thought it was so funny. So I had a similar experience. Yeah, that's great. Anything else? Three is really great for somebody who didn't know about the assignment. That's excellent. Thank you. Okay, Amy. Recently, I just found out that when in Ch when in Kimin, when we say he sui, we say ling zui, but then in Taiwan, I think you don't differentiate from ling de. Mm -hmm. So they just say ling de, even if it's water. That's traditional, because I was told this when I was learning Minayu you long ago that in the past you did not drink hai shui. You just didn't drink water. If you had, if you were thirsty, you drank tea. So even if you were drinking water, you still say ling day. Wow. And I, um, also, I, I learned that. So when it, if it's been boiled bef already, then we say ling, you say ling day. But if it's like water that's like um, bao te ping sui, we say you, you don't use day. Oh I, oh, I see. So kai shui is day. 
Yeah, that's right. That's traditional. And then the um, other one is that, um, oh, if for those that know me, don't say it. What does me die mean? Me die. Me die. Sorry, I don't know it. Okay, uh, most Taiwanese probably don't know it because it's something that in China, Kinmen we say. It means, gama. So when somebody's calling you, like, it's like, me die. What do you think that comes from? I'm not sure. I'm, I don't think so. Or me is a I think it's from sort of like mengya. Because xia mi de ni is a mengya de ni. Me die. Yeah, but then. But we say me die. That's sort of like what's up. Yes, it's like when somebody's calling your name and you say what. And then, Interesting. Okay. Um, let's see. I, I also found out that we have a lot of different um, pronunciations for a lot of Taiwanese words. For example, tongban. In Taiwanese, I think it's ingala. Is it tongban? Ingala. Yes, but the, um, we say dui. Dui. Yes, from the um, the chi old. Old coins, they have like a circle in the middle. They have a hole in the middle. We say dui, ji dui. Just the nigga qian, just tong qian, tong bao, is it? That one is called what? Yeah, tong. Dang dui. Oh, tong. Dang is tong. Oh. We are counting money, dui, ji dui. Interesting. And so you still use it. We, okay. Yes, we often mm -hmm. say dui instead of ingala. Okay. <laughs> and then um, for xue xiao, I ha ha, but then we say olden. Oh, xue tang. Yes. Okay. And then, 刚刚有说猪，这是第一根猪，不一样。还有鞋子，围啊，围啊。But then 袜子，是，我，对，我们是不，不。We often have that uh sound. And then, oh, fan fan su. An zi. An zi. Fan su, uh, 那个地瓜粥 How do you say? An zi be. 地瓜粥 An zi be. We say be, I think it's from 粥米这个字米啊，你们会说粥的字，所以我们会说be 假 be. And then, oh, 你要去哪里？你不去去丢，你不去丢。So we say 不 and 去 and 丢。Good. And then, um, 谁？的那个人是谁？梁。梁。Say it again. 梁。梁。梁。And then, um, 一间，对，一间房间的间，几街，几街，还有住哪里？像你问一个人，他住哪里？卡丢位，卡，卡丢，也是站吗？也站，就是站哪，站哪里？嗯。然后还有扫地，我最近才发现说，小金门他们有一个很不一样的说法。那扫地通常是念扫头卡，还会念扫的。少德，对，少德。然后 ，Okay. And then um, I saw on the news, like on the um the title, the 标题，呃 ，it was about the 最近樱花季。And then so 他们要去赏花，然后有那特餐可以吃，可是位置不够多，所以有些游客吃不到。那他吃不到会直接用那呃 the Taiwanese word 口跟一个无。嗯哼。叫假博。So it's like um. 很长的标题会混一些台语的字。We call that code mixing. That's been popular for decades. <laughs> yeah, it's been really more and more popular. And also, yeah, and also English and Japanese all get mixed in. And mm -hmm. um, I think that's it for mine. 很丰富 Very good. All right, we're going to start over again at the beginning with the people we missed. I'm Bella. Bella. I heard a woman who speaks. Uh, almost always Taiwanese, she said Chun Jian instead of Chun Juan. Yeah. How does she say it? Chun Juan. 
and Chun Jie. Yeah, and uh -huh. she wanted to say Chun Jie. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. And the second thing is, I went to um, I took the Kaohsiung MRT and I heard um, the Guangbo, and it says. Uh, in Taiwan, it, it still says Dan, but I heard locals they say Dollar yeah. Dung. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. It's a literal. Or, and some people are discussing this in around here, and they say it should be Gu Gu Neng. And some people say, What is Gu Neng? <laughs> but they call it Dua. Dua Liang Neng. What's the second? I can't hear the second one clearly. Uh, say it slowly. Dua Liang Neng. Da de da. Oh, Liang. Yeah, Liang. Okay, Dua Liang Neng. Say it slowly. Good. Now it's very clear. Okay. <laughs> I'm sorry. I need to hear yeah. it. About this, um, when the Kaohsiung, when the Kaohsiung MRT was um, was established, at first they used Luoliangneng, but they found the the company found that it's too weird. Oh, so? <laughs> so they changed it to Guneng. Uh -huh. Guneng sounds like all at all. Yes. <laughs> so, <laughs> so after they change it to Juda, because we, we may speak uh, Taiwanese with uh, mixed with uh, some Mandarin Chinese if they we don't have such word in Taiwanese. And for the Hakanese, they uh, they originally use Yi Dan. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Just Ju Dan, yeah. Yi Dan. Uh -huh. but uh, after a while, they change it to Ju Dan also. Oh, because it sounded funny in Hakka. Yes. And right now, the MRT says Ju Dan in Mandarin. Yeah, uh, you will hear Ju Dan twice and followed by Kaohsiung Arena. By Kaohsiung Arena in English. Yeah. That's right. Chinese, Taiwanese, Hakkanese, and English. So uh, we have two Ju Dan and Jidan, one English. You will hear Ju Dan twice. Uh -huh. Three times. Three times. Three times. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Mandarin, <laughs> Minayu, and Hakka, yeah. and then English. That's four announcements. I bet a lot of people are learning Hakka the way never, they never have before in the MRT. <laughs> it's pretty effective because you hear little children repeating, right? They repeat the English, they repeat the Hakka. That's interesting because uh, this is the very first time I ever heard that because I've been to Kaohsiung many times and I take the MRT almost every time and I've only heard Ji Dan. And I thought, you know, here we are in Kaohsiung. And one thing that feels really good every time I go to Kaohsiung is when I get on the MRT, it feels really good when I go there. You have that feeling too? It, it just sounds so mechanical. Exactly. I feel that too. As soon as I go down there, you feel, this is my language. I'm so comfortable with this language. This is what we speak down here. And that feeling just is really warm. I love that. And people say, well, nobody takes the MRT in Kaohsiung. No. <laughs> but I do. <laughs> it's because, but, uh, it's because uh, uh, there are only two lines in Kaohsiung, and it's not so convenient. Because uh, many stations are in the Shijiao, or it's not so uh, into the downtown city. Visitors love it. Because it's not just me. I've talked to many people who take the Gautia, the Kaohsiung, and they always praise the wonderful system. You get off the Gautia straight to the Jieyun. You don't have to go out of the building. You go straight there. We really love it, but we're, we, none of us are from Kaohsiung. <laughs> OK, that is interesting. So that's the first time I heard it. I love that. That's really cute. It sounds more like Minayu. Yeah, that, that Guneng sounds terrible, doesn't it? Yeah. OK, good. More? Had only two observations. Yeah. That was very good. Next. Uh, I'm Vivian. Uh, my first uh, observation is uh, I have a, a niece. Uh, she's uh, about one year old. And she uh, often say only her names or uh, instead of saying uh, I. Okay, she says. says. She says. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So she refers to herself by her name. Mm -hmm. I used to teach my daughter that way. My father found it was strange. I go, like, does Nani want to eat? You know? He says, do you always talk, you know, have her talk in the third person? <laughs> but I guess a lot of kids do it here. I bet they're copying their parents. Do you think? I think uh, she, uh, if uh, we say you, uh, she wouldn't know it is her. It is she. Yes. Um, you've all had this in Yugai, haven't you? 
about how, yeah, it's dyxis, words that refer to um, people, different people, like the speaker or the listener, or here, there. Those terms are very difficult for a child to learn. So like when, um, when you say to a child, for example, ni bu yao, they'll go back, ni yao, ni yao. <laughs> they want to say, well, yao, well, yao. Because it's very difficult to change the person, according to the speaker. For children, they have to learn. They have to zhuan huan. It's not straightforward, but if you use a name, it's always the same. That's what you're thinking. That's your explanation, right? Yeah, very good. Yeah, Carol. <laughs> exactly, exactly, and you still remember that. Oh, it's not that I remember that because my dad always repeat that. <laughs> <laughs> it's very embarrassing, but that's a very good example. You're probably only one year old. Yeah, I guess so. So you, not many people remember back to when they were one year old. But that's a really good story. That's a good story. Same kind of thing. So Dyxis, it's D E I X I S Dyxis. It's really. Really difficult to learn. Okay, anything else? And uh, I heard some Italian English, and they pronounce R. Uh, the R English uh, is a trail, not, uh -huh. not uh, approximate. Okay, so really, uh, what ridiculous? Really ridiculous, something like that. Uh -huh. And and sometimes they also pronounce. To like the like uh, to where they pronounce do where mm -hmm. that's they they say do do where for mm -hmm. to where mm -hmm. that's right and do you know the reason for that do you remember when we were learning about VOT voice onset time uh huh so uh, you know that it's different in a lot of the Romance languages from English. In English, we have a lot of aspiration with voiceless stops, right? So do and to, we've got a lot of aspiration. Not as much as Mandarin, but a lot. But in Romance languages, they mostly don't have that much aspiration. Either no aspiration or just a tiny bit. French is the same and Spanish is the same. The voice stops are very voiced, so it would be dare or something like that and then da for the T sound with no aspiration. So they very easily bring that over into English. So that's a good observation, good, okay? That's good, very good. Okay, next, Miranda. Um, I went to my grandmother's house this winter vacation and uh, I found out that my when my parents talk to their, our relatives, they have heavy code mixing of Southern Ming and Chinese. Mm -hmm. and I actually, Mandarin, we should say Mandarin. Actually, by the way, Southern Ming is Chinese. Oh. Whatever the politicians tell you, Southern Ming is a variety of Chinese. And so that's why it really bothers me when they say Zhongwu and Zhongwu, and they're talking only about Dalu, and they're talking about Guoyu. So keep in mind, Southern Ming is a variety of Chinese. And in Chinese, we make it clear by saying Han Yu. It's not popular in Taiwan. That's what they say in China. But in Chinese studies, we usually say Han Yu. Often it refers to Mandarin, but it also refers to all of the dialects as well. I just wanted to clarify that because it's become very politically correct now to say Zhongguo when you're talking about Dalu. In the past, we said Dalu, right? But now, you know, we don't belong to them. It's a very sensitive political issue and it's become popular. Um, just keep in mind that all of these dialects are varieties of Chinese. But thank you. Yeah, go ahead. So they mix Southern Mean and Mandarin. Uh huh. And I actually recorded and counted the times and I found that there are about a dozen times per minute. <laughs> <laughs> Wow. I guess it's because sometimes there are words that they don't have the uh, shelter mean version. Like, uh, like do that. Uh, <laughs> so they have to use Chinese and they will. Mandarin, yeah. Uh, uh, Mandarin and continue to use Mandarin until they finish the sentence. You see that in Lian Xu Ju, way back in the years when I used to watch this stuff. For example, Wan Ju, they use Mandarin. 
，整个都是闽南语的连续剧 ，but they say one 句。Uh huh. So that's an example. Do you have any examples offhand? Like some names. Okay. Uh, like Fu Yixuan and people's people's names. Uh、mm、huh. -hmm. Names. That's an interesting one. Get that gets very established in Mandarin. Yeah. Uh huh. Anything else you can think of? Uh, uh, more modern things like Gao Qing Dian Shi. Something. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Modern things. Okay. Good. Um. And the second observation is that I found、uh, there are different accents in southern and northern Taiwan.、Mm -hmm. In southern Ming,、mm -hmm. like, uh, 没有 Um. In northern people say 无 Mm -hmm. And southern people say "bo,"、uh, the vowel is different. And can I ask you something about your own Minnan? Yu, yu tao, gen, nega, oysters. Oh, ah, oh, ah. So you distinguish them clearly. Not everybody does. Is there anybody who does not distinguish them clearly? Some people say "oh, ah" for both of them. You 每个人都会分吗 ？In Kangshan, we. I would say Gaoxiang. We still say Gaoxiang. <laughs> In Gaoxiang, we、yeah. uh, for the oyster we say ora and oa both. Okay, so it gets mixed. Yes. Anybody else? Because I've seen a lot of people made fun of because they said oa jian, oa jian. I've I've seen a lot of people being made fun of for their incorrect pronunciation. Okay, but you distinguish them clearly. Good. Okay. And also I found some、uh, usage like、uh, in I say、uh, some in southern Ming as 不利亚，一招了不利亚金，一招了金金，一招了不利亚金，不利亚金，嗯，不利亚。At least, but many people doesn't know that. Like a lot of people here. <laughs> yeah, I hadn't heard it before. Bulia. Oh,、uh, maybe because my mother is from Yilan. Yilan. I don't know if that's. You know it. Okay, so do you use it or you just understand it? I understand it, but grandmother says that、oh. it's、uh, faster than a little faster, but not so fast. Okay. <laughs> okay. Quite. Yeah. yeah. Very good. It seems like we're getting some interesting yu liao from Tianmen and Yilan, yeah, also from Gaoxiang. Okay, anything else?、And、the last observation is quite funny. It's we are playing a smartphone、uh, at home, and we are testing the yu yin xi tong. There is a Google search, and you can speak to your phone, and it will search for you, so you don't have to type. It's called ASR, automatic speech recognition. ASR, automatic speech recognition. We're going to learn about that this semester. ASR. Okay. Or you can just say、uh, voice recognition. Okay. And and uh, and we, uh, my mother tested it、mm, and tested tested, tested、mm -hmm. it, and she said uh, Zhong Hong, uh, the coffee. 咖啡的中红，中红，中红。哦，中红，中红。烘焙。哦，中红。So it's a dark roast. Yes. A dark roast. Yeah. And、uh, the Google came out like 中风。啊。That's what I thought it was the first time. Oh.、Okay. Yeah. So I think it's quite smart that it can. It can. I mean, it can correct your.、Yeah. Taiwan language, eh? 不标准的国语 That was pretty good. 然后中风频率还蛮高的，比中风还要高 That's a really good one. 好厉害哦，被训练过 Good. That's it. Thank you. Okay. I'm Tina. Uh, in winter vacation, I I went to Gaoxiong and I also found a very interesting. Pronunciation of a station in Gaoxiong MRT, uh, Aozi Di, and in Southern Ming. Southern, everybody, Southern, Southern, yeah, uh huh, huh. It's south, but the adjective is Southern. In Southern Ming, 
It is called Labade. In Hakka, it is called uh, Labedai. Okay. Uh, the second one is. Uh, do you know the origin of it? Uh, it sounds like a Yanju name. No, it's it's a uh, it's a old name of the place of one of some uh, region in Kaohsiung, and it, it was because that it was uh, out in tree. Uh huh. It's uh it's lower. Just have it. Have it. It's very low. Right. And then so it's a lot of day. Uh huh. Oh, okay, it's not Yuan Zhumi. It sounds kind of Yuan Zhumi to me. <laughs> okay, good. Thank you. Um, the second one is when my mom say Yu Tou. Says. Says. Mm -hmm. Says Yu Tou. Mm -hmm. She says Yu Tou. Yu Tou. Oh. Ah, okay. <laughs> and the third one is uh, I heard different pronunciation of Guan. Uh, uh, Guan. Uh, uh, in Southern Ming, Guan Gong is called Guan Gong, uh, but Guan Du is called Gan Dao. Okay. Gan Dao. Gan Dao. Gan Dao. How do you say it in Gaoshan? Guan Dao. Oh, say it once more. Okay, got it. Thank you. And when you're giving me examples, you have to slow down. Sorry. Okay, very good. All very interesting. Okay. Jerome. Uh, uh, because I, I live, uh, my home is in Kaohsiung and... Mm, please say Kaohsiung. <laughs> my home is in Kaohsiung yeah. and uh, the people around me uh, usually they speak, they're used to speak... Uh, used to speaking. Used to speaking mm -hmm. uh, Southern Ming or uh, the so-called Wai Shen Qiang. Yes, and this is Wai Shen Qiang Zhongwen. And I found that it's uh, the tone of uh, the so-called Wai Shen Qiang Zhongwen. It's, it's similar to uh, Taiwan Man, Taiwanese Mandarin, but uh, it doesn't sound like uh, Beijing Mandarin. Right. It's like, um, uh, it, it's very hard to <laughs> explain the difference because it's a feeling. It's like you hear two different ways, you think, oh, this is an outsider, this is Right, that's right. Um, so I think what you're saying is that they speak a more educated kind of Mandarin. They're, they have a higher level of education and it shows in their Mandarin. So when they speak, they sound like they're a Wai Shenren of Taiwan. Yes. Um, in the Zhong family, they, they grew up in a Zhenzun. They also have their own special kind of Mandarin. So when I say things that the class doesn't understand, that's usually where they came from. For example, Kai Yang Hun, Yijing Jiang Guo. But that isn't necessarily just from the Zhenzun, but they have a lot of mainland influence, pronunciations, and expressions. That when you hear somebody talk, you know that probably, they probably grew up in a Zhenzun. And you're saying that your friends, they speak, it sounds like a more northern kind of, more educated kind of Mandarin, not what you'd expect from somebody in Kaohsiung. That's, what, what sub-area of linguistics is that? That we're talking about? Yes, social linguistics. That's, that's a really interesting topic for social linguistics. And there's a researcher who's looked into, he mainly is interested in the Zhen Zhen Guo Yu, but he's also interested in what, how we define Taiwan Mandarin. His name is He Wan Shun. Lu He de He, Yi Wan Liang Wan de Wan, Shun Li de Shun, He Wan Shun. He's a very, very good friend of mine. He looks into things like that. So if you're interested in this, you can look him up and find some of his papers. Okay, uh, good. And uh, as for Kai Yang Hun, I asked my mother and my aunt. They say, they said that uh, in Kaohsiung or in southern Taiwan, they usually use it uh, to refer to uh, the action of having a foreign boyfriend or girlfriend. Really? Yes. <laughs> That's a new meaning. That's really interesting. It's, it's 延伸出来的. 
Yeah. Uh, I think the the word the words may be written not the same. It sounds the same, but it, it may use the different words. N which words? Which which ones would you write? The yang will be xi yang de yang. 本来就是西洋的洋。本来就是西洋的洋。Oh, I thought 阳光的阳。No, no, no, no. 它就是西洋的洋。As far as I know, that's what I've always assumed. Unless I'm wrong, I, somebody check. I, I heard my grandmother say 孤影如车 and it means the same as what、uh, Miss Zhong tell told us. Can you say it slowly, please? 孤孤影如车 Oh, okay. 车哦，就是车窗。No, 不是。车车名是婚。Oh, okay. Very interesting. So they have that expression in Yunnan. Yes. Okay. Good. And um, oh, and because all all the people in my family speaks, uh, they are used to speaking, uh, Southern Ming. So I found that their zhi zhi shi zhi is disappearing, and instead instead they may say zhi zhi shi. The so, ah, 这样 would be 这样 and 好热 would be 好热 I think we discussed it a little bit last semester. This has been a really popular topic. People have been watching this for years. The thing is, it's not that it's disappearing. I don't think it was ever there. 它从来没有 Only in schools, because when they first started promoting Mandarin in Taiwan. They did not have teachers from Beijing in most cases, so they were they were people from all over China, and they spoke a, a not so pure variety of Mandarin. They call it what Lanqing Guanghua, Lanqing Guanghua, and so I don't think Taiwan ever had zhi zhi shi. It has never been there. So it's not that it's disappearing; it was never there. This is my opinion, my observation. Because at the beginning of the Chinese language. 就不是那个北京人在在推行了。嗯、um, ，As for 乐 ，I think that's a sound change that's definitely coming. Yeah, 好乐 ，and yeah, 好乐 ，and 吃、uh, 乐 ，and things like that. But so, so, so the interesting thing about that is it's not completely gone, because if you really say 吃吃吃 so strongly， 就是完全不分 ，people notice. At least in the north, I can't speak for the south. I haven't lived there, but If you really, for example, um, 这样要要这样吃啊，老师，没有人说老师 ，people say 老师 ，they don't say 老师 ，but they don't say 老师 ，it's in between, and people have written papers about it. In fact, I have one paper that also mentions it. So, two points. Number one, I think it was never there in Taiwan Mandarin. It was never there, except in theory and in schools. And number two is it's not completely gone either because if you go all the way to zi zi zi, 听起来真的很土，然后有时候也会听不懂 because once I got the word wrong, was my own Mandarin mistake or foreigner mistake. I said 厨师 and suddenly the students just what'd you say? 厨师哦，厨师，厨师老师的师，对 So I made a mistake. It was a foreigner mistake. And they didn't understand when I said "si" instead of "shi." So the thing is that it's still halfway there, but there is definitely change going on, especially "ju" for "lu." I think that's getting really common. Okay.、Uh, and about the nasalization of the vowel I mentioned、uh, last semester in "chita" and "shopa,"、uh -huh. I asked people around me, and I found almost everyone say "chita" with a nasalized vowel, but My like my mother say so pa, she doesn't nasalize it, and my aunt nasalize it. So I think for Chita it's because it's uh influenced by uh Southern Ming because we say Gita, we use a nasalized vowel in Southern Ming. But for for other words, I still cannot figure out um why some people nasalize the vowel but some people don't. It's another good social linguistic topic. That's a really interesting topic. I haven't seen anybody write about it. So, if you want to do a paper, if you want to go to grad school in linguistics or something like that, you can develop that. Start collecting data because you were the one who started, you know, giving, sharing your observations with us. I did also listen. I also went to the south. I went to 
Dongbu and Nanbu during vacation. And I listened a lot to my son and his girlfriend and her family. And both my son, my son and his girlfriend say, huh? Both of them. They're now about San Jose. Yeah. So my son has it too. Okay. Yeah. So that's interesting, but nobody mentioned so pa, so I don't know about that one. I'll have to ask. <laughs> I, I don't know if it's um, individual uh, segments, because uh, for me, I said so pa mm -hmm. and da ren. Da ren? Yes. I, really? I, I don't think we have that, but I'm going to. Everybody start paying attention to nasals on those words. It's ah, yu mu. Yeah. Yes, but I, I use nasalized vowel in some tones, uh, in some uh, only in some tones, because mm -hmm. I said da in, I don't say da in, da in, but I say da ren. Okay, so, so you say da, you have a non-nasal vowel yes. there. Yes. Okay, you're gonna say. Well, I have nasal vowel in pa, mm -hmm. but in pa we have nasal, nasal one. Hai, hai, hai. You mentioned that before last semester, pa. Yes, hai, pa. Yeah. But I, I know, but some of the people just don't nasalize all the vowels in uh, in Mandarin without if if the vowel is isn't with a nasalized uh, with isn't with a nasal consonant. Okay. Look, please look into that. Yeah. You keep collecting data. Do you have anything else? Oh. And for the Lian Shu Ju in Taiwan now, uh, well, recent years they like to mix. They like to mix uh, Chinese, Mandarin Chinese, Taiwanese, and English. So, how about Japanese? Uh, no, they don't really mix Japanese, but they like to mix English with uh, Taiwanese to show that someone uh, came back from uh, from uh, from else from another country. So they might say they might say any any power ticket as schedule. Somewhat like that. Yeah, okay, good. <laughs> and this is sort of Indian, but um, I find that for code mixing in Taiwan, you'll find that a lot of papers and texts will tell you that code mixing is usually for content words, for new objects. Like with Minan, we said, Xin de dong, biao xian dai de dong xin. But I find that in Taiwan, you code mix with a lot of function words, okay? Either ni gong wo qu, or ni zen me yang. Yeah, either, or, those are function words. Okay, uh, or and, or. Handle function words, people will say them in English. A lot of structure. So that goes against what it says in some books. You can start noticing where, code mixing is a really popular topic, but we haven't finished with it yet, so keep observing. Mm -hmm. Okay, anything else? Uh, I think that's, all. that's excellent, good. Okay, Amy's already shared with us. One. Okay, go ahead. Get a second um, round. It was in middle school. Be there, nie so, nie jiao. Right. My mom could only say ne so, ne jiao. Oh, good. And then I, I, I tried to um, like correct her, but then she has to concentrate a lot to be able to say nie so, nie jiao. She says ne. Ne so, ne jiao. Very good. And that is consistent with the other data. Okay. Um, I'm Carol. Uh, the first one I collect is already mentioned, is from my grandmother. Uh, she's um, native language is Taiwanese, so um, she she says hua uh, gao and hong li. I think that's very common yeah. during New Year. And because, uh, my guessing is that because Taiwanese don't have the sounds of yeah, so I think that's very common if you want to. Uh, imitate someone who had the Taiwanese Chinese uh, Mandarin and the second one is from my dad um, his native language is Cantonese and, oh okay but, is he from Hong Kong or yeah you can say that but anyway uh, <laughs> <laughs> too complicated okay yeah it's quite complicated okay, okay. but it doesn't matter um, he always say ya, brushing his teeth and Shota. Oh. Yeah. So it's kind of because uh, it's not 100% uh, ritual facts because mm -hmm. as in Taiwan Mandarin, we don't have that uh, that back, but it's kind, kind of like 
between s and sh, so it's shuo ya and shuo ka, and we always make fun of that. Because it's the same word. Yeah, it's same, but and、uh, later I found that it's.、Uh, he also say, zhuo instead of zhua, so it's the u a、uh, sounds that he cannot pronounce clearly. And I checked Wikipedia, and I found that、uh, in Cantonese,、uh, if they have a diphthong, the a、uh, sound is never the second part of the dip diphthong. So I guess that's a problem, but. When and later he say xi gua oh gosh <laughs> it completely ruined my、uh, because he can pronounce that like ah、uh, in xi gua and wa but when it comes to shuo and、uh, I mean shua and zhua he he sort of like into the all sounds that we so that, so what's the manner of articulation he's having trouble with、um, retroflex.、Uh, Because it's all it's draw and shaw, I guess. Because the、um, I'm thinking of manner of articulation. I think it's 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 fricatives and affricates, right? Sh and j, fricatives and affricates. Because the stop seems to be okay. Gua, that's a stop. But fricatives and affricates, he's having problems, I guess, right? Yeah. Yeah. That's interesting. How does he say things like "liang kuai de liang"? Is it normal? <laughs> yeah, I think, or maybe because I'm so used to it. Ah, or liao like、uh, liao gu liao, like a liao. They will say things like liao, or like. It's、uh, hard for me to. to, to I, I don't think、on. my dad had such a strong、uh, accent, Cantonese accent. A Cantonese accent, because、mm -hmm. he's been living in Taiwan for more than thirty years, so. It sounds actually okay, but only a few. A couple words. Yeah, a couple of words that, well, like,、mm, show his real identity. Ah, <laughs> that itself is an interesting idea that I haven't seen explored much in the literature. That we can also keep our eyes and ears open for, and that is, that, a lot of times we all just have little markers that are different from everybody else. Everybody has these、yeah. idiosyncrasies. Idiosyncrasies, because I notice it in my own speech. There are a couple things where I show that I'm from Minnesota, and I can't come up with a good example right now. But there's some funny things about the way I talk. But just a couple here and there. The rest of it is pretty standard Midwestern English. But in myself and anybody else, usually there are just like two or three things that are a little odd,、yeah. which is a little reassuring that at least we have some individuality. <laughs> We're not all exactly the same when we speak. But very often, I've noticed that because I listen to a lot of audiobooks, and there's a big difference between professional readers and actors who read audiobooks, 就是有声书 and the volunteers. Mostly, I listen to volunteers because they're free, online on LibriVox. 就是免费的 But everybody has something odd about their English. Every single reader, because they're not professionals. But when I listen to the professionals, all of that has been smoothed over and homogenized. 全部都同一化了就听不出什么特色 ，unless 除非是装的。So that made me think, just from listening to audio books, that all of us have something a little funny about our native language, which is interesting. Somebody should study that, this little area that is not quite sucked in by the mainstream. If you see what I mean. What I was trying to say about liao is they say something like liao, liao, or yeah. It, it just sounds really funny, and I notice it in most Cantonese speakers in Taiwan who speak Mandarin very well. But you hear it in ao. Ta jiu zheng ge ao hui bian ao, gui gui de. Maybe not your father. That's <laughs> yeah. Ke jia ren ke neng ye shi na bian you dian gui gui de. Right. Okay. Anything else?、Uh, yes.、Mm, the third one, I don't know how to categorize it, but、uh, it's my uncle.、Uh, he's a very good swimmer, but he. Always say yu yong, yu yong. Ah, yeah. He's not. He's not. He's not Hakka.、Right? No. Okay. We were talking about that on our trip, actually. Yu. Um, I don't know why, but I think because the second word yong is kind of the rounding, so he has this yu. Is that the only word he does it with? How does he say, for example, yu xiu? Uh, I I have another data is that he say yu lai che. Okay. And、But that's, that's still the same word. Yeah, it's very 
it's very strange. And later I found that he said Zhu Yu, and it's normal again. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's um, it's um, if the Yu is at the beginning of a phrase, it's Yu. But if it's at the end, like Gan Man Yu and Zhu Yu, these are just it quite okay. These are all just conjectures now. We're guessing. We're making up theories. You can write them down and then see what you find. We were talking about this, this U sound on, on the trip. But actually in Mandarin, there's different vowels for the first two tones from the second two tones. So actually it's liu, 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 in theory. In Taiwan, you maybe don't follow it strictly, but it's, it should be yu, yu, or liu, 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 liu. liu. 六跟六会比较偏向右，然后第一声、第二声比较偏向右，很，所以 that's part of it, I think. It's related, but he's not consistent. Yeah. Yeah. So you need to look into it more and find out what it is. I mean, what you have is a theory, but we need more evidence. Okay. Good. Anything else? That's excellent. Good. Okay. You me. I'm Yumi. And this winter break, I went to Tainan, and I found some um, some different accents from in Taiwanese. So that means that are different from my family. And in Tainan, some people will say, "diu la, diu, 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 diu la, diu." With the falling tone, you mean? Yeah. And, but in my family, we say "diu." Diu. It has a middle yeah, tone. Middle tone. Yeah. So deal with the fourth falling tone. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, there's a little child. Uh, she went went to Taiwan with with our family, and I found that she can't she can't dis distinguish b and p. Like uh, she will say how ji how ji pian, not how ji bian. How old is she? Um, about uh, it's already seven years old. Seven. Yeah. Wow. But she can't distinguish, and I try to say how uh, but she still say how So now it's probably become a habit, and it's going to be hard to change. Because you know, habit is what's hard to change. It's habit. It's not the sound. She can, just like uh, the nei shou nei jiao. Whose who's was that? That was yours. She can do it when she thinks. Then she can say nei shou nei jiao. But to change the habit is really, really hard. Um, how about other sounds? Is it just a few or is she consistent? It's like a da bian. She would say da pian. Really? <laughs> okay. Anything else? Mm, yes. And also in... Because um, they're both pian. It's both the same syllable. Yeah. The other thing is, no, I, I, I didn't hear If you get the chance, try to observe because it may be just bian. It's like a syllable. Did you find it with any other initials like de and te or anything like that? Yeah. Or ge and he? Ke. Okay, how interesting. And one of my friends um, from Beijing had uh, some, some words like he was saying, uh, but unlike in Taiwan, we say Okay, so that's a grammatical difference. Yeah. That's that's something we would just not say in, in, tai, in Taiwan. And Xiao right, uh, something that um, many things, and he would say, do the chill. Huh? And we would say, but he would say, do the chill. Wow, I haven't heard that one before either. Do the chill. Do the chill. Okay. And the last one that uh, one of my friends he said when uh, said, said. he said when we altering the um, retrofresh components in Chinese like zhi chi shi and uh, most people will have their tiptoes still stay curled back after they pronounce zhi chi shi. For example, and like zhi chi shi, I mean the tiptoes will still stay curled. curled. Okay. Curled, but um. He said he would just, no, he would stay flat. Okay, so zhi chi but like I said. But it's still her like zhi chi shi. That's right. Yeah. That's what we just discussed that earlier. It's close to the English zhi chi, like zhi and ch, like church and judge. It's close, except we have rounding and you don't have rounding. Otherwise, I think it's quite close. Good, anything else? 
That's excellent. Did everybody get a chance? Anybody think of something suddenly? It just came to you. Yeah. Okay, Wendy? Okay, our time's about up. Okay, um, I don't know whether it's only happened to my mom or other people. When she was trying to speak English, she tends to like adding R on every word. That's a good point. I've noticed that in certain people, and one of them is an English teacher. Yeah, and she does that all the time. It's like she's trying to sound very American, putting those R's there, and they put them in the wrong place. Because uh, when my sister and I went to an uh, English kind of school, she went there with us every class, and I was, uh, I guess it may be, um, she, may, she may think that Adding art, it sounds more like American. Yes. And the second one is, um, because when my mom and my family, my mom, my sister, and I went back to China, my mom's Nianjia, and my cousin will say, You are, is she? Um, can I speak in Chinese in both yeah. houses? Uh -huh. So we will have Oh. Oh, so it's sort of like a family idiolect thing. It's yeah. just something your family has. That's very interesting. Maybe all of you have something special in your family that you only say in your family and you don't you know, hear all the otherwise. I mean, we have a lot of things in the family that I grew up with. that were, We call them Stephanisms, things that we only say in our family. To give somebody shimps, to give somebody shimps means just a marinja. And it comes from German, schimpfen. So a lot of the things in our family actually come from German because my father spoke German before he spoke English. This is really interesting. We didn't get to our textbook. We will next time. And uh, by next time, make sure that you have the book. And your first assignment is chapter one. So as soon as you get your book, read chapter one, take notes as you're reading, and then make a summary of it, two questions, to be handed in the Wednesday after this coming Wednesday. And is there anything else we need to be reminded of here? Let's see. Yeah, start, start reading also in the course because we're going to read in class. And there was something that I saw in the final um, evaluations for this class. A number of people mentioned this. And they were actually a bit angry. <laughs> and they said, and it's something I've noticed too, because I'm, I'm reviewing the DVDs for this class. To say if you know, you know, so cool. This is how I like them to take it out. But I repeat myself a lot. I repeated things a lot, and some people were angry about that. They said, "Why don't the people who get corrected learn it? So you don't have to repeat the same thing over and over again." I would be happy to not repeat it. I would be really, really pleased not to repeat it. But if you keep making the same mistakes, like says and said instead of says and said, everybody. And change instead of change. You can see somebody nodding in the class. We know where one of those comments came from. If you learn them and you remember them when you're reading, I'm not going to waste 15 minutes going over the same thing. I just listened to that DVD. How come it's here again? Because somebody made a mistake while reading, and then I went to Tom Pendalwin again. Now, I would prefer not to do that. But unless you change, what can I do? So I want you all to think about that. The way to avoid it is make sure that you make the changes that we talk about in class. Prepare your reading ahead of time. Like prepare two or three pages of chapter six before class. When it's your turn, you won't say change. And then 
Amy will go, ah, you like it. Okay? Got it? You guys need to make some permanent changes. Otherwise, we're going to waste a lot of time going over old material again and again and again. And it won't hurt the listeners if they're Taiwanese, because they probably need to be reminded, but it really does take up class time. OK, any comments, questions before we dismiss class? That's it. We'll see you on Wednesday.